Hi, yes, um, I'm Davinder Singh, um, a visual artist from KL, and uh, welcome to my space and where I uh, produce some, more, some of my artworks and mostly paintings here. Yeah. I'm at the moment uh, rearranging the whole space actually, so uh, it's a bit messy, but uh, this used to be my previous workstation, so I've moved in to a room right now. Most of my current works are based on discarded objects and stuff, so I repurpose them, um, reconfigure them, and so um, that's, that's something which is my current focus on. But prior to that, um, I, I, I like a lot of uh, movement, like the artists from the Dada period, you know. Uh, I, I use a lot of uh, collage and I collect a lot of old magazines actually so s most of the material is from old magazines and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I've used a lot of soil because uh, I, I did a series uh, called Testana and uh, what I did was I created this uh, whole crane system. Uh, it was just uh, to symbolize what tower cranes are you know, which you see everywhere and uh, it was my little silent protest against uh, overdevelopment which is in KL which actually I was protesting against the demolishing of my previous studio which is the old Razat Mansion. I collected soil from all these different areas which were bound to be demolished for redevelopment and I uh, contained it in this acrylic containers and topped it up with this uh, um, crane which I'll show images later. Uh, I'll have, I have some images. Uh, this was actually for my first solo, yeah, so this was like basically studies for uh, how the works were supposed to be displayed. And so as you can see, there's, there's a lot of, uh, like this is turmeric, so, and that's like a graphite shaving of a pencil, and that's actually uh, nutmeg. And yeah, this is just a uh, drawing actually. Yeah, so it's just like a little bud. I'm not sure what plant it is, I just picked it up. I think it's from Cambodia. Yeah. And I have a little tick here, like a real tick. So it was just crawling and I just pasted it. I pasted like, um, I know it kind of sounds cruel, but I think they're even more cruel than us. When I when I was in university as well, uh, I've been uh, I used a lot of uh, flour. Like I, I used flour to um, like wheat flour because wheat flour has got a different color to it. So it was just a, a palette which I uh, instead of using acrylic or oil, uh, this were substitutes for me to to not to buy some, like uh, not to say buy but uh, not to make uh, man made. Uh, products like, for example, tube paint or something like that. At the moment, I'm using salt. So it's just a little research-based experiment which I'm doing on salt, which I'm really going to be like um, using in my upcoming show. Yeah. And because of, uh, this, I think there's all this spiritual properties which is, which is attached to it, you know, that this ritualistic play of it as well. You know, it, it, apparently, it's quite holistic and also heals and also protects you. So I'm just going to share a little bit about uh, what I did in my previous show uh, since because you can see most of the items are here. Uh, yeah, this is something which I collected from an old uh, abandoned factory, a foundry actually, which they used to smelt iron and used to make cast iron molds for machine, machine parts. So the, the, the story behind this work is uh, actually this, this goat was uh, photographed by me I think about almost 15, 16 years ago and um, it, was, um, it was sacrificed for a ritual for um, I think it was an opening ceremony of a new temple, a Kali temple so um, it, it was quite a new experience for me because uh, and quite traumatic as well because you actually saw this this creature before and after the whole thing and uh, it kind of uh, stuck with me for a while so but I uh, the photograph was like 
and I was taught in some of my pile of other stuff, which I just took it out during uh, MCO uh, because I had all this time to bring out old stuff and see what I have. So I found this again, and then um, I, it's just like I think it went well with the whole first aid box, which is I think it's very very old, and you can still see like some iodine marks here. Yeah, so it's just something which I I, I, I like uh, cabinets and storage um, like uh, objects which you can store stuff in. So I have collected most of it. Like for example, like this chair is all from uh, discarded uh, wood, which is from around that factory as well. Uh, and my uh, the last show, which is called Tagistan. Um, it was like the whole show was based on uh, this particular word, uh, tagi, and uh, I kind of uh, was quite curious what it mean, and then did a little Google search on it, and apparently it translates to storage in uh, Indo-Dutch uh, translation, you know, and when the Dutch occupied Indonesia back in the day, so and so yeah, the whole uh, Tagistan actually means like storage land for me so like tagi and uh, tagi means like storage and stan is like another suffix for land so hence I created this whole uh, project based on that particular word and yeah and a little bit of uh, symbolism is also involved like uh, especially this piece I, I actually have a goat um, um, like a black goat here and with a hammer a broken hammer head and um, when once it's like lighted up and stuff, it looks like an altar, which you. Um, but that goat is black and it has a pentagram on it, so people always think that it's satanic or whatever it is, but it's not. I think it's just something which I um, kind of play around with. Uh, I had a lot of time on my hands, so I came up with this uh, game. I invented this this uh, game called uh, Tagistani Floating Chess. So it's actually a combination of uh, three different games. Like um, I think everyone as kids, like during their childhood, they have played. I'm sure they have played rock paper scissors uh, and checkers and also Jenga. So this is a combination of all those three games in one. So, how the game works is like uh, I, I have this, this Chinese checkers which I found from that abandoned factory as well. It's like you have uh, two players and the whole idea is to, uh, to use rock paper scissors to determine uh, the move of um, of the opponent and uh, and the other player so yeah so the idea is to have to to create balance but by using chance because you're relying on chance because it's rock paper scissors so that's why uh, it's very hard to predict um, uh, who's going to win and who's not going to who's going to lose so actually there's no winning and there's no losing uh, in this game so pretty much you got to lose enough to win and to win enough so that you don't lose so it's in that kind of concept so was that they get an inflation from the shit oh by the way this is to ward off evil yeah this is actually rust so, it's just my whole personal theory on it. <laughs> Alright, see you. Bye. Take care. Have a good day. Be safe.